All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Mark 1 Laboratory Extension, or Mole, which is being made by forum user Angel125, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, if, like me, you prefer playing mostly in sandbox, it adds into the game a lovely selection of new parts for building space stations, and who doesn't love that? But but more importantly, if you are a fan of career mode, what this adds into the game is, of course, still space station parts, but they are space station parts meant for early game. It's one of the big complaints I personally have of career mode and why I don't play it much is because my favorite thing is building space stations. And thanks to the tech tree, you really don't get effective space station building parts until typically mid game or so. But thanks to this mole system of parts, you can start building it with earlier tech, which makes sense because the parts are actually somewhat historically based as they are sort of uh, modeled after the manned orbiting laboratory system, which was a concept by the U.S. Air Force back in the 60s to build a orbital <laughs> reconnaissance outpost to spy on people, basically. It never actually happened. It's a now defunct project, but we can now play with kerbalized versions here in the game, and that's just fun. So let's jump right on into the VAB and have a look at what all the mole system does add in. Now, we're going to use the Mark 1 command pod for size comparison today, but not only for size comparison, but also remember, if you're in career mode, this is meant to be early game space station parts. So in the early game, this may be your only command pod you have, and that is important to remember, because all of the parts are really styled after the Mark 1, which is quite cool for consistency. And then, the lovely developer of this mod, I love you Angel125, has made a Mark 1 Laboratory Extensions tab, where we can find all of the glorious parts that are a part of this mod in one place. Now we're actually going to start looking at the command pods first, as we have three, two manned command pods and one uh, robotic probe core. And the first we're going to have a gander at is the Mark 1-85 Appaloosa. You know, the Mark 1's a great command pod, but it only seats one person. What if you want a second up in space? Well, bam, there you go. It is literally just an extension for the Mark 1 command pod that adds essentially a second seat. This will only hold a single Kerbal, but it is a second Kerbal you can take up into space with you, or of course leave it empty and then pick someone up from orbit and return them home. Now inside, of course, as I did mention, it holds one crew member, it has a reaction wheel, it actually has an electrical generator, which is quite interesting. It'll take 36 monopropellant per hour to create 0.75 electric charge per second, so a pretty decent little generator, honestly. Now, on board, it does, of course, have the crew report that it can do. It does have a built-in RCS system, as you can see right here, and then also holds 100 electric charge and 100 monopropellant, when, which, of course, with that 100 monopropellant means that this could go for about less than three hours before running out of power to be able to be produced, which still quite nice. Now the next part that we have is going to be a independent command pod, and it's the Mark 1-88 Brumby, and it's effectively sort of a evolution, a further development of the Mark 1. It does hold inside of it a minimum of one crew, but it can hold up to two. Similarly, it has the reaction wheel, it has the exact same resource converter for making electric charge. This one, though, does have a built-in SAS system, the typical crew report, RCS, to 100 electric charge and 100 mono repellent. And it is just really a sexy, sexy command pod. And I love these windows here. The internal view on this thing is gorgeous. I'll show it off later because you can actually see out of these two windows and it is frankly beautiful. So a very, very cool looking command pod there. Now the final one, oh god, it's going to take me a second to find it here because it looks like several other parts. Ah, the Titan Instrument Unit. Here we are. It is an unmanned command pod requiring 1.7 electric charge per minute. It has its own built-in reaction wheel, SAS, and 200 electric charge. And it's simply a lovely 
lovely little thing, which actually, let's pop it up on the top, because you can see some really cool internal parts on this thing that I quite like the look of. That is uh, quite a nice attention to detail on the interior of that, which really, really makes this mod stand out. We have a few other parts like this, where you have a lot of internal complexity to the part, which I really quite love. And also, just for the other two parts, I mean, just look at these beautiful models and these beautiful textures on them. It's quite well done, and that is a theme you're going to see throughout all of these parts. So let us get back to things, and then start from the top and work our way down. And the first we have is the AEFF1 Airstream Protective Shell. It is a 1.875 meter shell here, so there we go. It fits on that, and can go outward like any other protective shell that you have. Beautiful, but of course, like I said, it's a 1.875 meter sort of uh, size, so a little bit bigger than our typical size for the Mark I, uh, but not too big, or not as big, rather, than the 2.5 meter that you typically go up to next. It's sort of an intermediary stage, which actually is going to be, for a lot of these parts, they fall into that 1.875 meter intermediary stage between our typical 1.25 and 2.5 meters, because, again, it's meant to be sort of a stepping stone technology between early game and middle to late, which is quite nice. We then have a uh, coach logistics module, and this uses the community resource pack so that you can change it to a variety of different resource configurations from coolant, xenon gas, equipment, just anything and everything. Effectively, if you have a custom resource in your game, it'll probably have it somewhere in here, so it's quite convenient. Now, the next part we have is the DR18 docking port and it is a 1.85 meter size docking port which is uh yeah just full of docking goodness there we go we then have a 1.875 meter heat shield which fits perfectly on the bottom of our lovely new adapter here very cool indeed and it's just a you know a nice little heat shield nice and rounded uh, the next part we have is an engine adapter, which is quite cool. Now, one thing that's always kind of bothered me, we're going to actually just grab this engine here real quick, is if you have, like, an engine like this, if you have then build another part below, the engine shroud is just going to cover the engine, which makes it so you kind of have weird gaps in the side of your ship. But with this lovely adapter here, we can put this engine adapter here, then put the engine that fits inside of it, and then when we put something under here, it connects to the adapter to create a, a shroud rather than the engine. So it actually fits nicely in line, and I really, really do like that. And it comes in two different sizes. You notice that this one goes from there to this connecting point, and this one has just a uh, lower up connection point. So you don't, you'll fit a smaller engine inside of this particular shroud. And that's the only difference between those two, but they are quite lovely. The next we have is an interstage service compartment, which is, you know, like many of the other service compartments, you open them up, you put things inside. This one's a little bit interesting though, because it is a built-in active, active radiator, so it will use electric charge, but it will dissipate heat. It has its own built-in decoupler, and it has built-in RCS. And what's fun is if you have, like, say, the command pod up here and then a habitation module down here, it just seems weird from an aesthetic point of view that you could transfer people between them because, well, it's a blank space. Well, you can add a crew tube so you have something in the center to make believe that your Kerbals are crawling through. And that's just lovely. I, I just have a really good smile on my face from an aesthetic choice like that. It's just, just pretty cool. I haven't seen something like that before, and it makes me happy. But overall, just a very good little service compartment with many, many good features. Now, next is, of course, this engine that we've already grabbed here, and that is the Fulcrum Liquid Engine. And it has the usual alternator. It has quite a bit of thrust at maximum thrust of 270 in vacuum, and will consume 8.45 liquid fuel per second and 9.8 oxidizer per second it does have gimbling and yeah quite a nice little powerful engine fits in well with the theme of everything here which is just good and nice we then have a mark one docking port which is a tiny 
tiny little docking port, if we take this off, meant to be stuck onto the top of a Mark I command pod, or of course this new custom command pod here. So we have just this lovely little thing. It fits right in line, as you can see, see the styling continuing onward, which is just lovely. Now we looked at these command pods. The next is, oh, no, oh no, we were up here. Never mind. We have this, a Mark I dry dock. Now if you have installed in your game extra planetary launch pad, this is a dry dock that you can build ships from. Now I don't have it installed on my game right now, so this won't work for me, but it's quite a cool part, so you can use this to uh, get an early dry dock in space for building your future missions, which is quite cool. The next thing, if we actually remove this docking port, is the Mark I flight control package, and this is quite cool. It fits on the top of this new command pod, or alternatively, on top of the Mark I command pod, and what it does, oh god, hold alt, though, there we go, is it adds to the Mark I command pod an RCS system that you can see up there, as well as a built-in parachute, so you don't have to worry about adding another parachute on it, and it also, of course, does store 10 monopropellant. Not much, but a little bit, and of course, of course, you can put the docking port on top of this thing, which is quite cool. So it uh, makes a nice little inline system so it takes up less room and adds more features. Always nice to have. Now the next part is a similarly sized docking port, but is a radial one you can just attach to anywhere, and there you go. Again, it fits with the styling of everything else, which is quite convenient. Now, now we're down to this actual row with these command pods we've done, and so we come to the mole, the actual laboratory of the Mark I laboratory extension. And if we just pop this baby down here, as you can see, it basically is just the habit or the hitchhiker container, retextured and colored, which I actually like, because it, of course, again, it fits in with the styling of the Mark I, which is quite cool. But inside, rather than holding people, well, it still actually will hold people, it'll hold two crew members, but it's a lab. It is a functioning scientific laboratory. So you are good to go with experimentation and will hold 200 electric charge. Very fun. Now the next thing we have is the mole power module. Again, let's go up to the top so you can see the cool styling on this thing. And what this does is it uses monopropellant just like with these command pods down here. It'll turn that monopropellant into electric charge. Now it'll do that at a rate of a 0.1 or 0 0.01 monopropellant per second to produce one electric charge per second. So honestly, a pretty good exchange there. And it'll also hold 600 electric charge as a battery and it stores 240 monopropellant. So this is quite a good good, effective charging system, a very nice power supply. Now the next is the second engine that we have in this particular mod, and it is, there we go, the O2 Oxygen Monopropellant Engine, and this thing is interesting. It has two different engine modes and a built-in decoupler, as you can see here, so that it'll launch off the sides when you're done with it. Now the first mode, well, uh, which technically is the one on the bottom here, is just your standard engine mode. It will produce a maximum of 10 kilonewtons of thrust in a vacuum, and it will consume 1.2, or 0 to 1.02, man, I can't read decimals today, monopropellant per second, and so a pretty nice little engine. It's basically just a more powerful RCS, but if you want to destroy it because it cannot be shut down once you turn this mode on, it will consume 101.972 monopropellant per second to produce 400 kilonewtons of thrust. So effectively, if you want to waste the rest of your monopropellant and you just need some last minute thrust, you can use these and you're good to go. It's pretty awesome. Now the next thing we have is a decoupler adapter, which is quite nice because not only is it a decoupler, but it goes from the 1.875 meter size down to the typical 1.25 meter size, and of course, is a decoupler. Now we have another decoupler adapter here, which I don't know why it's called an adapter, because it's there's really no adapting. It's just a standard sort of 2.5 meter decoupler with no really adaptation, any curve or anything like that, but still a nice decoupler. Now the next part is a SPF-8 photovolvic panel, which if we zoom out a bit and slap this baby on there, 
is a solar panel. Now this one is quite a nice a large solar panel that will produce quite a bit of electricity at 10 electric charge per second, but once it is extended, it cannot be retracted. So it is a one-time release sort of a thing. So you better basically put this on a space station that you don't plan on moving anytime soon, which I don't know why you would move a space station, but eh, you never know. And then, we have a station light, which is just a lovely little light that we can turn on here. It's actually quite bright and, uh, you know, we'll cover a whole large area around it. And, of course, consume electric charge to provide said light. The next thing we have is a station logistic hub, which is an unmanned command pod. I forgot to tell you about that one earlier. It will use 1.7 electric charge per minute. It has a reaction wheel. It does have convertible storage in it, as you can see, and holds a small battery of 10 electric charge. But the real use for this thing is as an early game station hub. It can actually hold one Kerbal inside of it, and as you can see, will provide an attachment point on the top and the bottom and then three different attachment points on the side so you can start building your stations outward from there which is quite nice to have and you know just a cool little piece and a pretty nice little interior view for the one Kerbal that does get inside. Now the next is a structural adapter that will go from the 1.25 to the 1.875, just a nice little piece. We then have another Titan tank adapter which goes from the 1.875 to the 2.5. We then have uh, the Titan instrument unit we already talked about, the Titan nose cone, which is a nose cone. We then have the Titan separator, which is just a 1.875 meter separator. Very good. And then we have a selection of fuel tanks. We have the Titan storage tank here, which is quite a large fella, and it is a convertible storage tank, so you can change it between whatever you want from liquid fuel and oxidizer to just liquid fuel, liquid hydrogen, whatever it is you're wanting to use, even minerals. We then have a smaller tank. Oh god, there we go. The Titan 450 storage tank. Excellent. The Titan 900 storage tank. Lovely. And then finally, we have a twin engine coupler, which will provide you with liquid fuel and oxidizer. As you can see there, 135 liquid fuel, 165 oxidizer, and provides attachment points for two engines on the bottom. Always good. And then last but certainly not least, we have the WBM 400 fuel tank, which also serves as a 1.875 to 2.5 meter adapter, a decoupler, it does technically have an engine in here, which uh, is just the decoupler, really. It doesn't shut down once it's activated. It has RCS built in, which is lovely, a convertible storage tank, and solid fuel, as you can see, for the whole decoupling thing. It's basically just a really powerful decoupler, which works out quite nicely. And again, with the different storage containers, you can switch it to whatever you desire. All very, very cool, very lovely parts. So let us head out to space where I have built a quick little space station that uh, to show off basically what sort of a thing you could build with this mod. And again, remember, it's meant to be an early game space station. So this is what you're going to be making, you know, much sooner than you typically would make a space station in career mode. So it's not going to be the most impressive thing in the world, but you know what? I love it. Let's turn on all the lights so we really get some good views on this. And there we go. We have our glorious mole space station with a uh, second ship over here that can be decoupled and sent off to head back to the planet. Uh, oh, it actually does have a parachute, of course, with these bits right here. We have our lovely uh, solar panels, our laboratory, the hab splitting thing down here, fuel tank and engine, all that lovely stuff. And if we turn back on the UI and go into the view, we can actually take a look at the internals. Now, of course, this is the typical Mark 1 command pod. We can then go to the extension to the Mark 1 right down here. So we're just sitting right behind the Mark 1 command pod. And we got Pong going. We've got a little Kerbal OS right there and just a lovely little internal view. I really do like it in here. Now the next one we have in line is the mole, so this is the laboratory. A little bit spartan, not exactly the best of internal views, but you know what, it's functional and we can just go over to our other Kerbal, Kerbal here. And yeah, just uh, could use a little bit more work on this one. 
We then have in that uh, hub part, the one Kerbal that can sit in here, and you can see the three different uh, sort of, I guess, airlocks to go out to the different sections that you build off of your space station, plus the top and the bottom one. Just a very, very nice little area. And then, of course, the new command pod here, and look at this thing. I love it. It is a two-person command pod. You have those glorious windows for viewing your flight. It is just gorgeous. I love the interior of this thing. I honestly think this might be my favorite part for this entire mod. I mean, I love all the space station parts, but this... This is a beautiful command pod. It is really, really rather quite nice. And it's meant to be sort of an intermediary stage between this and the Mark 1-2. So overall, quite nice, quite good, and just a beautiful, beautiful space station. So if you would like to go and try this mod out for yourself, I would definitely suggest you go and do that so you can check out the link in the description as always. And yeah, it's just a fun little pack. And if you do play career mode, it helps you make cool little space stations earlier on in the game. And who doesn't want that? But yes, this has been the Mark 1 Rab Laboratory Extension System. And it's beautiful. Go check it out. Have some fun with it. And of course, I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.